know, routinely, I'm going to enter this trade because of this, this, this reason. It, it, it makes sense. Logically, let's enter. And then they exit aggressively. All right? Hey, if I'm wrong, get out. If my profit is in jeopardy, get out. I mean, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a yin and a yang, a, you know, a balance there. Uh, always have a stop loss. Never trade a tip without doing your own research. I, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you guys ever got a stock tip and wish you never had that stock tip? I mean, I, I've done that all the time. You know, one guy, I remember this just like it was yesterday. This gentleman, what was it? It was um, Ar Arthur Anderson, I believe. It was, that was the, the, the company with some accounting hiccups. Is that right? Um, it was just hic That's a PC way to say it, okay? Um, and I remember this like it was yesterday. A gentleman who was working with the company, I think, one step removed. You know, whether it was a client or, uh, or he knew somebody who works there, a golfer. I can't remember what it was. Uh, he said, you know what? I know. He goes, I know all about this stuff. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The company's doing fine. Now that said, is that if, you know, who's more powerful, this gentleman who has his opinion or billions of dollars in institutions? Take a guess. It's the institutional money, right? And so whether or not whatever you feel, or whatever, I know this sounds unique, and it may sound even a bit um, arrogant. No matter what you feel, it doesn't matter a whole lot what you feel. It matters what everybody else feels, right? I mean, if you're bullish, great. But if the overall market it isn't, you're in trouble, all right? So you got to just kind of biased. Biased investing can cost you money. You know, I think it should go up because I, you know, you're going to listen to the market, use our system, and pay attention to the arrows. If you come with an opinion, it can be very expensive, all right? So that's where we talk about <clears throat> never trading a tip without doing your own research and beware of upcoming announcements. Me you know, many times I find students are, um, are, are in trouble because of earnings announcements. You better know when your stock is announcing earnings. If you don't, look out. Let's go back to what I just said, because we know that we trade on perception rather than reality. Well, when that earnings call happens, can perception drastically change in an instant? Of course. Reminds me of a, a, a trade I made. I made a trade. A guy told me that it was a really good stock, OK? So I was already kind of trading on a tip, so I didn't really do a whole lot of research. But he said, we're going to come up with great earnings. And I said, you know what? Thank you. Let me do my own research. Well, I went to do my own research, and I found out he was right on. The company was solid. They had a good market guide Zach score, 3.25 and above. We had a good price pattern, 2.5 and above. And an up, the stock was uptrending, uptrending industry group. And the big chart was showing that industry group uh, money flow was good. I said, right on. This looks good to me. We were looking at a stock or an option. And since I wasn't comfortable with the stock yet, instead of using my hard-earned capital for stock, I just used a small amount to buy an option. Well, sure enough, earnings announcements. And it's always very dangerous to trade over earnings announcements. Very, very dangerous. So I used a small amount of capital, only you know, a few thousand dollars. And sure enough, the earnings came out, and they were fantastic. Now, I, st I tell you honestly, I do my best to be unemotional, but when there's days when you make, you know, sometimes, you know, two, five, ten, twenty, or forty thousand dollars in a day, it's, it's easy to become emotional, all right? I, I fight it the most I can, but sometimes I'll come home after a nice five figure day of trading and I'll say, honey, dinner's on me, all right? You know, I, I, I still, I'm still human, okay? I mean, I so, I'm, I'm as disciplined as I can be, but when the lights go down four o'clock Eastern time, I'm in a better mood oftentimes, okay? So then that said, I only had a small amount of capital in this trade, and, it, and literally, I was just feeling great. I, you know, I was saying, wish I would have invested more, you know? And I'm looking through the paragraphs, and it says, oh, we do this, and we have this contract, and we're doing well here. And then, about the 14th paragraph down, it was a small little paragraph, it said, however. Now, guys, ladies, however is not a very good word in an earnings uh, report, okay? I mean, just look out, whatever comes after that. And so it said, you know, you know, you know yada, 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 blah, 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 however. And I was kind of curious now on what, this, what came after however. And it said, however, is pricing pressure from our competitors is going to squeeze our profits going forward. So even though our sales look very good, is we will have lower profits over the next two years. Now, do we don't trade on what has happened. We trade on what's going to happen, right? So sure enough, that stock opened up about 10% lower. And I said, oh, I will hold on to it. I mean, I better just hold on. I mean, it's a good stock. Sure enough, it goes 10% lower, crawls up a little bit. And I said, hey, maybe we're OK. And then sure enough, 
bad news, a bad economic indi indicator came out, and the whole Dow Jones, everything just started moving lower, moving lower, moving lower. And instead of holding on to it, I just, I'm gone. I mean, I just cut my losses, and away, away we went, all right? So I'm just telling you, please be very, very careful if, in fact, you hold over an earnings announcements, okay? So that's uh, beware of upcoming announcements. And review your positions nightly. Now, many of you folks are full-time working. That's fine. Review your positions nightly. Why? Several reasons. One, of course, price change. But two, let's begin with the end in mind. Just keep in mind, many of you folks can't, will literally not afford to be able to work in a number of years. You know, five or ten years, you'll be making too much money from this business if you want to treat it like a business. Therefore, if you are full-time like I am and you do become that way, you're, you'd check your positions nightly, daily, maybe a few times a day anyway. So let's start with that discipline now. I'm big into discipline. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm an athlete by nature, all right? So if you'll notice, I'm a little bit competitive by nature. I've played, you know, from uh, rugby to uh, volleyball to, uh, to uh, uh, ping pong to tennis to, I don't know, I, I'm good at a lot of sports. I'm not great at a whole lot, okay? But I'm pretty competitive. I'm good at a whole lot, whether it's, uh, you know, I do some skydiving and do some rock climbing. I really enjoy sports. And that's what I think, I, why I kind of carry that over because I'm, I'm disciplined. If somebody tells me to do something, I listen. All right? If a doctor comes up to you and says, hey, listen, you've got high blood pressure, this, this, diabetic, whatever you are, you need to do cardio three times a week for 20 minutes. Has anybody ever heard of that? You know, got to keep healthy, right? Low carb diet. Car I, I listen and I, and I do it. All right? If your coach tells you you need to kind of follow these rules, I'm going to encourage you to listen. All right? Is that gentleman or that, that lady who's your coach, they, my guess is they have a little bit more knowledge than you do. All right? If you get an email from me, get an email back from me, and I encourage you to maybe follow a certain guidelines, I'm going to encourage you to listen. Why? Everybody wins. You know? Hopefully, maybe I'll get a, a, a partner out of you. Maybe you and I will be trading uh, you know, from the beaches of the world together. I don't know. I mean, my laptop has a, you know, wireless internet. If you, know, you heard of this, you, know, you, you just boot up your laptop and you can surf the net from anywhere. Well, I, these hotels I go to, anywhere I, when I go on vacation, I love to go near the pool, all right? and they have wireless internet. So I press the big power button and I <clears throat> surf the web <clears throat> poolside. That's kind of fun for me, all right? I think that's a blast, all right? Just maybe an hour a day and then spend the rest time enjoying. And then when the market closes, all right, give, you know, take a look at everything and see how it's going, just long term, okay? Why investors trade options? <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's why investors trade options is it's easier to make money. Is that, that's a pretty good reason. It's easier to make money when in, because of these tools, all right? Number one. We can use calls and advanced options to make money when things go up, all right? We already kind of know about that, right? We buy in the greens, we sell in the reds, all right? Kind of a review of what you've already learned, all right? Now sideways, part of the reason why I'm here, if you remember my story or if you've been in my workshop, I'm going to tell you kind of the right information here. When you're in my workshop, I'm going to give you some, you've probably already experienced some really, maybe some intimate stories as far as I'm concerned, but I sat in an audience at O'Hare Airport and I looked at this gentleman in front of the class this was when we, we didn't even have Success Magazine's toolbox back then. I mean, we had, we had, we had Windows 3.1. That's what, I mean, I mean it was DOS-based, and then Windows came out. It was wonderful. But, but I sat in front of them, and I, and I said, wow, you can make money when things go sideways. And I remember from my training, learning about the stock market, that the markets traditionally don't always go up. A lot of times, they, ch they, they churn. They just trade sideways. And yet... Why uh, investors trade options is you can make money in a sideways environment. That was very, very attracted to me, all right? Next is you can make money when things go down. We can either use put options or advanced options. And when we talk about advanced options, some of the things that I use are selling naked puts as well as spread trading. I'm a big spread trader. And in spread trades, I won't get into it in depth, but on average, I win 67, maybe 70, 80% of the time. Entering a spread trade, it's fairly easy to make money about 60, 70% of the time. As you get good, it gets closer to 80, 90% of the time. So just think about that. Long term, if you make 10 trades and you know you have the skill set to make money, you know, 7 or 8 out of 10, as long as you keep your losses to a minimum, you have literally a cash machine, right? I mean, just, just work it, all right? So long term, that's what we call our advanced options. I do trade a lot of that. So many ways to profit. Let me give you a little background on options themselves. There are five exchanges to trade options. The first one, if you'll, let's take a look at the screen here. You'll see right over here we have 
the CBOE, that stands for the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. If you're interested in learning more about either the Chicago Board or options in general, they have a fantastic website, www.cboe.com. That's Charlie Bravo, Oscar Edward, cboe.com. Moving on there, we have also, and that's the largest as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, the largest as well. The Pacific Exchange, Philadelphia, the American, and the international markets, okay? So we have five exchanges. As you progress in your options knowledge and you become more advanced, you may even ask your coaches on, there's separate brokers that you can use, all right, that you can actually send your trades specifically to different exchanges, okay? So that's a little bit more advanced concepts. If you're interested in that, ask your coaches. <clears throat> leverage, again, it kind of goes without saying, okay? Leverage is a key way to invest. That's why we're using options. On from there, portfolio insurance, all right? Um, the, what's the most valuable thing you own? If you guys don't know the most valuable thing you own, it's not your house. It's not your car. Or I hope it's not your car, okay? Ideally, so you know the most valuable thing you own is the following. The most valuable thing you own is your ability to earn money. That's it. All right, so if you're 20 or 30 or 40 years old, you can, and you earn, you know, I don't know, let's use a round number, $30,000 a year, you've got 20 or 30 more years to do that, yes? All right, now if you have 20 or 30 more years to do that, and you learn, you, you, you learn, you know, how to trade options, and instead of making $30,000 a year, you then improve that to $60,000 a year, and then you fast forward that 30 more years. Is that amount, you know, 30 years times 60,000, is that going to be hopefully worth more than your car and your house put together? I hope so, okay? So that's, uh, that's uh, uh, what we're talking about there, portfolio insurance. That, the most valuable thing you own is going to be your earning ability, and soon it's going to be your portfolio. Why? Here's my question for you. As you're facing it today and you're learning more about options, we're going to roll up your sleeves, why haven't your brokers taught you more about options? That's a good question to ask, okay? The easy answer is they don't get paid to teach, right? They get paid to make money for themselves and their, their brokerage firm. I understand that. Um, and reduce risk. We've, we'll talk about that here all day. Time can work, work against you. So the number one difference between stock and options is the following. Options are a timed investment, all right? A stock you don't necessarily have to sell ever, right? You can own a stock. It can go right into the ground or it can go right to the moon. You don't ever have to sell that. However, with options, it is a timed investment. You have to sell it before expiration date, okay? It's a timed investment. And that time can work for you or against you. That's where we get the leverage from. You could lose your entire investment. Ladies and gentlemen, you could lose your entire investment, okay? If you invest $30,000 in a stock, it could go down to zero. If you invest $3,000 in an option, it could go down to be worth absolutely nothing. Okay, you could lose your entire investment. That is the way it is. Options are risky. Don't let anybody tell you they're not, especially without an education. With an education, after you finish our course and you finish our coaching sessions, I firmly believe 90 plus percent of you folks will be trading mainly, mainly options, excuse me, mainly options, because your education is up and your, and your knowledge is up. It reminds me of driving a car, all right? If your knowledge is up, several of you folks, like myself, have probably put on hundreds of thousands of miles, if not over a million miles on vehicles, right? If you think about that versus maybe a 16-year-old who have you know, put on 1,000 miles, we are driving down the same streets, kind of like the stock market. We see the same stocks, yet the 16-year-old versus the graduates of our class, we actually physically see more. Kind of like a driver. If you have put on a million miles, you actually see more. You see the truck driver putting on a signal, or you see the driver you know, do a quick head fake, or you see maybe somebody on their cell phone not paying attention, and you make slow adjustments. You get away from dangerous situations, or you might not, you know what I mean? We just see more because we have more experience, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Increase your knowledge and your experience, okay? Uh, so you don't lose your entire investment. It can be difficult to, to pick the correct expiration month and strike price. No kidding. It can be very difficult. If you do not pick the correct expiration month, and if you pick the wrong strike price, you very well may lose money. I'm not interested in losing money. So we're going to be taking notes here today, and we're going to be listening to our coaches. Uh, it's generally more complex than investing in stocks. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's just the way it is, all right? Uh, I remember one time I, asked, I would ask my dad a few questions, and, 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 and now I find myself responding the same exact way. My son may ask me a question, you know, Daddy, what, you know, why is this this? Or, you know, ask me, a, he's three years old right now, so he'd ask me, a, and I might respond just how my father would, which he would say, son, that's because that's the way it is. Or maybe another way, because I said so, all right? Or something like that. I, it wasn't a real, guys, uh, ladies, it's, it's more complex than stocks. It's the way it is. It's a learning curve. You'll be done with your learning curve, and you'll be able to teach your friends and neighbors. You know, I use that humorously, but I've taught my friends and neighbors how to work this stuff. They've come to our classes, and now I have literally a network in my, in my you know, cute little subdivision that I trade with. You know, it, it's, an, it's an awesome, it's awesome succeeding. When, when you're going a certain way, when you're heading a certain way, and you're making money, is it easy to bring people with you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right? All option traders should have a copy of what are, what's called the characteristics and risks of standardized options. It's going to be a pamphlet, uh, like a little booklet, if you will, that your broker will give you. If you don't have one, call your broker up. They'll send it to you free of charge. Now, that said is I want you folks, my students, I want you to read that book. I know oftentimes you get you know, offers in the mail like I do for my credit card companies and there's a stack of stuff you throw away and then you know, pay your bill and you don't get the free watch or the Bose sound system, whatever, you know what I mean? But this pamphlet right here, the characteristics, what is it, let me get the quote here, characteristics and risks of standardized options I want you to read. If you go ahead and read that prior to maybe your first or second session with your coach, your coaching will be much more effective because your knowledge level will be up. And when your coach uses a word like delta, or we're concerned of, you know, we're, we're, as you get advanced, we may trade with the option Greeks. Or we're going to use a collar here. That might be a good strategy. You'll know what they're talking about. It may be a new vernacular for you, and you'll be more experienced after reading this. So when that comes to you in the mail, read it. Okay? Read it. It's just a small little booklet. It's going to be, by the way, a little hard to get through in the, in the beginning. Read it a couple times. And then note, highlight it, you know, call the hotline, call your coaches up and say, hey, got a question. I'm confused. Help me understand this and, and go from there. Okay? That's what we're there for. Option versus stocks. Similarities. Both are tradable securities. Ladies and gentlemen, when you got your stock securities, your IBM or your Microsoft, it was just a piece of paper. That's all an option is. It's a piece of paper. It has a different symbol on it. That's about it. So let's say you own Dell stock, Dell computer. On your little stock certificate and underneath your arm, it said D-E-L-L. -L. All right, that's it. If you want an option, it may say, you know, D-E-L, you know, P-Q or whatever the option symbol is. It trades the same way. It shows the bid and the ask, and it's both traded, excuse me, both traded on listed markets. Who do you transact with? The same broker you do your stock trades with, all right? You'll need to know if they're a live broker or an online broker. Doesn't really matter a whole lot. You may be more attracted to online brokers simply because the deafness of that transaction will be fairly easy. You can manage it yourself. In fact, your broker will email you when, the, when your trades and your confirmations come through. It's very easy. Differences, options have expiration dates. That's, of course, the largest difference. And there is no fixed number of options. Now, that's a bit unique. There is a fixed number of stocks. It's called shares outstanding. Microsoft, I don't know off the top of my head, Microsoft has you know, millions of shares, or was it billions of shares outstanding, yet options, there's no fixed number. What happens if somebody wants to buy an option and there is no seller at that point in time, the market maker just creates the contract, literally out of thin air. Now, the market maker's job, similar to a specialist on New York, a specialist is to the New York Stock Exchange as a market maker is to the Chicago Board of Options, okay? That's the person who does it. I'm friends with a few of these gentlemen who are down there um, who, tr who are the market makers. It is a wonderful opportunity. By the way, if you're ever in Chicago, I would encourage you to call the Chicago Board of Options Exchange and see if you can get a tour because it is mind-boggling, the, the infrastructure that is involved in this. It's kind of fun to learn about it, okay? Um, but there's no fixed number of options. The market maker literally will create that. He'll hedge himself. He'll be what's called uh, delta neutral. He doesn't really care what happens to the stock. He'll go home, and he makes money on the small little bid and ask price and some other biased tools he uses, but that's mainly what it is. Option buyers do not own a piece of the company, nor do they have voting rights or receive any stock dividends. 
Ladies and gentlemen, when you were to go ahead and maybe you know, buy a share of Dell computer, very rarely would you drive your car over to Dell, you see the big, huge corporation, pull out the sledgehammer, you know, and then, and then just you know, chip off a piece of Dell, you know, like the, a piece of the building or something, and go over and then put it in the trunk of your car, okay? That's not what you do. You really just get a stock certificate. We actually physically used to get them in our accounts and put them in our safe deposit box. Now in this world of cyber trading, they're all just kind of cyber held, you know, by your brokers and things like that. Options are similar, all right, uh, as far as that you own the right to buy a company. You don't actually physically own that piece of stock. All right, and so in this case, you do not have voting rights. You do not receive uh, dividends, all right? Uh, one, let me, before we get into the options tutorial, here's something else a little bit different about options versus stocks, is their, uh, their taxability. I thought that to be a bit unique. The taxability of options is a bit different. Your broker will go ahead and re, re, um, give you a report on all your stock transactions, your buys, you know, you, you bought this, bought this, and then maybe uh, if you have maybe a, a, a program or an accounting program, they'll give you your, your schedule at the end of the year. Whereas they don't report any of your option trades, all right? I thought that to be a bit unique. Now, if you're an individual, it's, options are short-term capital gains, all right? Pay your taxes. Now, I'm all about paying taxes. Sure, you want to do it intelligently and use you know, any infrastructure needed through you know, whatever reasons, but pay your taxes, okay? Um, I have some people who have really gone to the next level to avoid taxes. You know, there's a, there is a difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion, and it's not just spelling, okay? There's a difference there. I want you to, to pay your taxes, of course, okay? But I mean, I, I literally have people now that are, are using our system to make millions of dollars, and they're very angry, or, you know, they get seemingly angry that they have to pay their taxes, and some of these gentlemen have literally gone to the, so far that they give up their United States citizenship. To me, that's too far, all right? I like the states, I, that's where I live, I'm, I'm good to go, okay? Now that said, I would encourage you maybe to use corporations, okay? If you own a corporation and you use some of your corporate profits to trade, that's just treated like ordinary income. So go ahead and take your tax deductions and your, your, your education expense and your, you know, maybe you need to fly to a seminar and maybe you need to tax deduct that or, you know, contact your CPA, I'm not a CPA, but it's taxed as ordinary income, okay? So just differences there, again, to give you a little feel for that. I'm not a tax expert. I have hired experts. Probably encourage you to do the same thing, okay? So let's get into our option tutorial, getting started. Option account agreements, trading permission levels. You will go ahead and you'll have to fill out a separate option agreement. If you're unsure how to do this, you're welcome to go ahead and either email us or call us and we'll help you through that. It'll be a separate option agreement, and these are the different levels that you'll probably apply for. Number one is covered calls. Number two, buying straight calls and puts. Mainly, if you're applying for options and you fill this out and you let them know that you do have an education, you'll be probably approved for covered calls and long calls and long puts. Now, the reason why you have to fill out one of those, and in fact, I've heard some brokers even will maybe even call you up and ask you questions, or maybe even have you fill out a form and maybe pass a test sometimes. I've heard this happen, and why is this? The reason being is because historically 85% of the lawsuits that happen happen because in brokerage world is because people are trading options that aren't uh, qualified, that they don't know what they're doing, okay? Charles Schwab came this close to becoming bankrupt for that very reason. Because brokers know that history, they go ahead and they have you fill out a separate form, disclaimer, disclaimer, so you know what you're doing. On from there, level three is spread trading. You won't be qualified to trade spreads. That's not a part of this course. That's part of our advanced options course. A naked options, uh, that doesn't mean that you sit at home and trade stocks in the proverbial buff, okay? 